Welcome to Network and Chill on the Couch. We're going to be hosting a series of talks with investors, entrepreneurs and startups who will be giving us a little bit of advice, some tips and an insight into their personal journey. So Jan, welcome to Network and Chill on the Couch. So tell us a bit about yourself. You're a investor and a consultant. Very correct. So I have devised my career in two avenues. Um, I've worked in the big tech from Google, Cisco and Walmart, mostly in marketing, data and insights and senior leadership advisory. But at the same time, instead of watching Netflix on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday evenings, I work in the evenings with leading tech startups in London, and scale them up to the next level. Okay, so you just work with tech startups? Correct. Fine, and they will go to you to get information on what? On marketing strategy, uh, mostly in terms of personal branding, uh, how to get to that next level. So initially they already have some kind of seed funding, uh, whether it's family or friends, or uh, an early on angel investor, and I'm the person that brings them to the next level in terms of putting them forward in either to much more high net worth angel or a VC. I clean their house as it may before I in invite the, the visitors. So how do you scale them to the next level? So um, I have created a marketing strategy framework. It's my own IP. So I have used um, the learnings from my academia because I studied marketing and strategy um, and the best practices from the big tech combined with the best practices from uh, the leading tech startups and I synthesize them together in order to make a very effective step-by-step science-based systematic marketing strategy framework that I run management through, create the content and make sure that whatever we spit out in terms of the public, whether it's going after um, uh, investors or actually going after clients, that it is very, very targeted. So can you be more specific on the science-based systematic approach? Yeah, so um, the first step is what I call the, um, identifying the value propositions assembling the rifle, as it may. Within this, I first go through their product anatomy, that's looking at the core product, the features around us, the augmented product, the values that are derived from it. So good, mar good marketers, they, they market with the values of the, that the product brings. For example, an iPhone, the value of having a touch screen is convenience, for example. But great marketeers, they actually sell with uh, the value in use, which is the emotions that are derived from the core features and the values of the product. So for example, car manufacturers do a great job in this because when they come up with a, say a new four by four, you see them in the high roads in, in Scotland and they're not selling the car, they're selling freedom. And by selling freedom and ev evoking that emotion. Attracts. Exactly, it, it attracts eventually the, the customers without being all in the face about it. They sell an emotion and that emotion finally um, acts as a seat for the initial purchase. Mm -hmm. Within that, we look at the hygiene factors and motivators. The hygiene factors are typically the features and values that they you need. It's a basic, so it might not win business, but in absence, it may cause it to be lost. And then the motivators are the ones that actually make from buy from us as opposed to their competitors. So we identify which features are actually very competitive within the market. And um, this way we look at the industry, we look, we look at the com competitors, existing one, new entrants, the typical portage five forces, and we make sure that we identify which is which. So can you give us an example of a hygiene factor? And then could you also give us an example of a motivator? Good question. So an iPhone would be a good example. Um, an iPhone can call. It has the ability to call, but it doesn't necessarily mean with that feature you will win over business from, say, Samsung. Yeah. But a motivator would, for example, be um, being able to press your finger on the home button and then it unlocks. So a motivator, for example, would be, um, a good motivator would be their ability to, if you put your finger on your home button, that it the screen unlocks. That would cause potentially 
uh, customers to switch from a Samsung Android phone to an iPhone. So that would be their motivator. That would be that last edge basically for them to come over. So tell us the second step. The second step is the target strategy. Within the target strategy, we look at which segments we want to go after first. We prioritize that different industries, but then within each segment, we also look off look we look for in terms of what personas we want to go after. Now, each persona has its likes and dislikes. Uh, a CTO would want to have different kind of information presented to them than, for example, a CEO or a chief marketing officer. These are just examples of personas, but you, the more targeted you are, the more you understand the psyche of these personas, the better you can um, determine what information you want to put in front of them because you will be, you will be competing for their attention span, especially in the digital era, it's very important to catch their attention every 10 seconds along the way. So then we've just had the second step, so the third step would be? Uh, the content strategy. Now we identified our, person our segments and within the segments our personas that we want to go after. We need to make sure that we're providing the right content for them. So we use lexical semantics, in this case in the English language, and semiotics and branding, which is the science of a symbolism, color and shapes, in order to make sure that whatever information we provide, this could be a case study, this could be a problem solution, which is typically brochure, which is typically for disruptive technologies, in order to, or we could provide them with testimonials, whether it be B2B, video-wise, or B2C. Um, and this way, we make sure that whatever we provide to them, um, they can, the message is properly conveyed and they are solving their problems. So the fourth and final step would be? Uh, the marketing tactics, pulling the trigger, as it may. So here, we already now know what our value propositions are. We know to which persona to, provide, to push through what kind of information. Now we need to identify where they hang out, as in what channels are appropriate to the personas that we want to reach. Now, there's uh, a lot of ways we can do that. There are automated ways to, uh, multi-touch ways in order to reach out to them, typically B2B, or there are highly targeted um, ways to do a B2C strategy where you determine the parameters of those personas in order to reach out to them. So thanks for joining us on the couch today, Jan. We've learned some really interesting information on how to scale up your business. If startups did want to contact you, they should contact you by LinkedIn, LinkedIn and you'll get back to them there. Exactly.